Today we're speaking with De Dr. Dennis Slayman, Director of Clinical Translational Research for the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, Revlon Women's Cancer Research Program at UCLA's Johnson Comprehensive Cancer Center. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Could you begin by giving us some background on the Herceptin trial? Well, the Herceptin trial is a trial that launched uh, back in 2001, and like many of these large trials, uh, it's taken a while for the data to mature so we can report. And we're giving an update uh, on the most recent update on what the outcome data show. Uh, in essence, it shows that Herceptin benefits women who are HER2 positive, both with regards to disease-free survival and overall survival. And it also shows, interestingly enough, that we can get a similar benefit whether we use an anthracycline regimen or whether we use a non-anthracycline regimen. And that's part of the big news. And could you talk about the implications for disease-free survival, overall survival, and cardiac toxicity? I think that's the important thing. The ultimate goal of all of these targeted therapies is to optimize efficacy and minimize toxicity. And I'm probably one of the biggest proponents of Herceptin therapy for HER2-positive women, but the only problem it ever caused uh, is cardiotoxicity and a significant increase in cardiac toxicity by about four to five-fold when it's given with anthracycline-based treatment. Now, all the other large trials used it in combination with anthracycline-based treatment because that's the standard of care. This trial, the BCRG006 trial, was the only one that had an arm that was non-anthracycline-based. The question then was, would it be statistically significant inferior to the anthracycline-based therapy? Uh, would it be similar? And what would the safety profile look like? And what we found was the efficacy is indeed uh, similar, and more importantly, the cardiotoxicity essentially is gone in terms of what you'd see over what you'd expect normally. The five-fold increase that you see when you give uh, Herceptin with anthracycline essentially is eliminated. In addition, the other significant side effect of anthracycline is the induction of leukemia in patients who receive AC therapy is also essentially missing in the non-anthracycline containing arm. When you account for the congestive heart failures and leukemias, the small difference in efficacy, which was not statistically significant, is more than made up for by the improved safety, which is statistically significant. So what are the next steps for the research? The next steps for research is to try and understand when Herceptin is used and patients do progress, why, what other alterations have occurred, and the other significant implication is for those women who, out of the gate, don't respond even though they have the HER2 alteration, what's the most or better effective therapy for them when they have the HER2 alteration? There's a lot of research going on in that area. The other important area of research is why does the alteration occur? Because if we can understand that, we can think about prevention strategies. And I have one more question for you about Stand Up to Cancer. You're a dream team leader for the project, an integrated approach to targeting breast cancer molecular subtypes and their resistance phenotypes. How is the project going? So the project's just about to launch. It's taken uh, mm -hmm. a while to get the, all the paperwork in order, but it hasn't taken a long time to get the team excited and really energized about it. We've been talking about it, exchanging idea, exchanging data for the last several months since the initial uh, application went in. Um, we're pretty excited about what's going on. There's already some very exciting information coming out for the triple negative population. We're also working on the exact question I just talked to you about, which is Herceptin resistance when it occurs. And we're also trying to determine what is happening with hormone responsive tumors in terms of why they sometimes escape therapy. So the idea is to feel good about the successes we have, but not stop there and really go after the women who are affected by the disease who don't respond to the appropriately targeted therapies. Thank you so much. You're welcome.